And we are back. Took a little bit, but we got Fortress Hardpoint like I promised everybody. Utica Pioneers fighting from the ropes against Rutgers Esports today. Jesse, we talked about it. This is an uphill battle for the Pioneers. Rutgers, can they continue to keep the Pioneers down today? Yeah, that's the big question, right? Can Rutgers really kind of stand tall? Will Utica have a bounce back here that's really what we're looking at between these two teams utica does still have those back spawns at the moment but you can see player number seven on the likes of rutgers chatter is starting to make their way through the back line they hold on to almost all of this p1 time and continue to hold on to this p1 time along with working the flip here this is not a good start for utica here and frenzy was on the hunt but he's lost everybody he doesn't know where to go at this point he's gonna look back at p1 a little bit windy oh, no. with the shots but chow's inside fortress oh. almost gets the better of chatter but it's a shutdown on a frenzy. Utic or Pioneers gonna struggle to get it to this P2 right away. You see Hyper looking to work his way through this double staircase into the fortress and see if he can break slowly but surely until Jham and Ryuga really box him out. Yeah, no, getting really worked on right now here if you're Utica. One player does look like they're starting to try to make their way through the back. It's 14, and unfortunately, 14 will end up falling there. And this has just been dominance here early on in this map from Rutgers. Nine points only so far to the likes of Utica. They do have an opportunity now to try to get onto the point, but still point here, one for Rutgers. And this is going to be a very important rotation, Colin. As we head over towards the Fountain Hill, this needs to be a rotation one here by Utica. And so Ryuga falls 14 Gets the better from him. He's going to post up in the back of the statue. Not sure if Chatter's going to read the full pull back here, but you lose out on Finn, and that's going to leave a two versus three for rotation. 14's going to find the first hyper on his shoulder. Wins the second one. Boxes Ryuga away from that gate. And 14, he has a trophy system too, so he's going to be in a good position to sit still, soak up this time, allow the rest of his team to get some kills. You're looking at Frenzy holding uh, holding towards the gate. It's a 2-2 split for Rutgers to get on in. Frenzy's got to go big. First one's going to be killed. Second one almost cut down. Chatter and Hybrid, Jayhem, they all get into the mix. They break through the front, and they even clear out Hyper. Oh, no, yeah. I mean, they hold on, what, the first 13, 14 seconds there, but unfortunately can't get much more time than that, and Rutgers... They completely flip out. They get a good setup looking here. Now everybody on Utica looking to start to funnel through. And Ryuga pushing the port. The front line being a real nuisance here to the Utica players. Looking for all four. Can't find Hyper, though. But still, this start here for records. I mean, I don't think you could have asked for a better one, Colin. No, you can't really blame them for taking another shot at P3. They have the rotation to P4. Chatter looking to hunt down some of these players. Shake up the spawns. You are going to get some information on 14 in the back, but a big kill to anchor things down on the inside. Finn hops in for time. 4 and 10. Not a good start, but you can soak up some of the seal time. Claw your way back in the series. Wouldn't be that bad of a start for you after all. Finn's going to go 1 and 1. 14 looking to get in on this one. Going to get a kill into hybrid. Allows his teammate to start getting into the hill. You see the play across the double staircase so the information is there for Rutgers although uh, Rutgers is just gonna group up and they collapse all together frenzy stuck on the inside Jay Ham's gonna find the kills really back and forth Jesse but if you're Rutgers you are gonna take this all day long make sure that Utica just don't get any time I mean, and on the flip side, for Utica, you'll take any time you can get right now, right? And, I mean, they did a good job in that hill of at least getting a good chunk of time off the initial. But now comes another one of those really, really scrappy hills. We're going to head here over towards Blacksmith. It's going to be Hyper set up, taking a gunfight here against Jham, able to find the initial gunfight win. But we'll have to go through middle of the map. Oh, my God, the snap to two and three. And this is a great chance now for Utica to get some good time here on the Blacksmith hill. But actually, everybody else is going to rotate through middle of the map here and they give initial time to Rutgers anyways. Rutgers is to spawn over towards P3. Frenzy top maps is gonna jump on in. Shatter welcomes him with open arms. 2-2 two, two in the feed but Rutgers still soaking up the time towards P5. Hyper now to take place of Frenzy top maps getting flanked out by Hybrid. Here is him but not able to get his gun up in time. Finn now the closest one to hitting this hill and Ryuga's just going to rush him with that fast nav. 14 drops and this is some good time for Rutgers to just continue to push this lead. Look at the spawns for Utica, Jesse. You have to be careful because they're split right now. They don't want to get caught in the spawn trap. No, they don't, but... I mean, if you're if you're Utica, I think the spawn trap is the least of your worries. You gotta just start getting some time here inside of this game. Down a hundred points here at the end of the first set of rotations. Just need to start working on anything at the moment. You do have a good player here in Frenzy working their way through the back line. 
will be able to find a kill on the chatter as well. This could definitely disrupt the spawns that are here in favor of Rutgers at the moment. Frenzy also just going to fly forward and actually get inside of the point for now, but his flank will be flanked itself as chatter pushes the back line now. And you actually have a good pinch potential now set up here for Rutgers to break B1 again. 14's going to get into the middle for a moment until Jay Hammett drops. Hyper through the middle of the map. Take down to 27 HP. Somehow still alive. Jesse going to be able to fight for his life through the middle of the map. Chatter not able to get the trade. Chatter in the hill. Four in a row. 1,880 to 75. Pioneer's not getting anywhere close to breaking this hill just yet. And Chatter going to look for the Claire's off the respawn. Finds 14 in the back. That's five in a row for Chatter now playing for that streak. You get that cruise missile, Jesse. It may be the nail in the coffin. Yeah, I was looking at the same thing. You get this streak here, and he does. This will absolutely look to ice the game here with that cruise missile. If you can drop that, you can open up so much of the map here. You can even save that for a rainy day if you need to. 200 to 75 here in the map. And... I think they might end up calling it in here to go for this break. Everybody just gonna group up. Chatter with the cruise missile gets two. The break on through, they flood. Jayham finally finds 14. And Rutgers get into the hill. 43 seconds. Enough to put this away or just barely off the mark, Jesse. If my math is right, we are gonna be going to another hill. So the pioneers, another chance to maybe break this 100 point club at the moment. Finn trying to get his way into this one. Ryu gonna, gonna shut him down. 14 to the back, tack in hand, forced off with the nade. And you gotta go, if you're pioneers, you either need to get into this hill or you need to rotate to P3. I mean, either way, I feel like you're damned if you do, damned if you don't at this point. If you leave the rest of this time for the likes of Rutgers to get, it's just going to put Rutgers that much closer to the win here. But if you don't rotate over, Rutgers is going to very likely put it away on P3 here in the second set of rotations. As we head towards the Fountain Hill, they have the full setup here locked down and loaded. JM will win a big gunfight. Trophy goes down, jumps in the hill. 20 seconds left needed. Utica still looking for a break. Yeah, 233. Everybody posted up. Ryuga making sure nobody can get to this double door. A little shaky on the shots to Frenzy. It allows maybe an opening. But with eight seconds left, you need to go and you need to go now. Hybrid trying to work his match right inside the hill. Finn, one versus one. Jayham with the pistol may have just closed the doors on Fortress. 250 for Rutgers. A 100 point club Jesse to open up this series. Only 87 for the Pioneers inside of the Fortress Hardpoint. And honestly, Colm, when we were looking overall at the records between these two teams, I feel like that is how we thought this Hardpoint was going to go. I mean, a 2-7 and seven record for Utica and Hardpoint versus the 4-2 and two record for the likes of Rutgers. Yes, both teams were have been able to find some success on Fortress with one win apiece, but so far, I mean, that was just pure dominance by Rutgers there inside of that map number one. No simple way to put it. Utica, they were outpaced, they were outmatched, and honestly, Rutgers just kind of ran through them there, and it's exactly what I was afraid of heading into that blunder that, that Fortress can really be. Yeah, you know, like I said, you get lost on the sauce on that map, and Ryuga made it clear that they were ready to bring the heat. I think incredible plays from both Ryuga and Chatter at times. You even had Jayhem and Hybrid breaking these hills, but when it came back down to those streaky plays that you were getting, Ryuga always able to piece together a few kills to make sure the rotations were in your favor. Always able to break with the help of your other submachine gun. And yeah, I mean, just pure dominance throughout that map number one, Jesse, from Rutgers Esports. When you looked at the series, when you looked at the headset, I mean, something that you may have expected, seeing that Utica Pioneers, they were only... Two and eight in hard points when it was broken down. You definitely see that there are some woes in this team that are definitely proven to be mistakes. And I think Rutgers, they really exploited that here on Fortress. Yeah, they really did. They, they definitely were able to take the weaknesses of Utica and really kind of flip them on its head. And it may have felt a little bit Colin too. I feel like there may have been a, an outpacing in the slaying quite a bit as well, not just in terms of the rotations and really kind of Rutgers running away with this one. It, it did kind of feel like there was definitely a little bit of a pacing in terms of slaying um, advantage going the way of Rutgers throughout that map number one. That's not saying that, you know what, Utica can't bounce back here through the rest of the series. I mean, you had 14 who was positive inside of that map number one. Uh, Finn, you know, 18 and 26 at least dropped a good amount of damage in terms of kills. Same with Hyper there in this game. That's just going to need to be a lot 
better inside of the search and destroy and i think the way that they come back in a search and destroy colin this team really needs to slow down the pace and i think you need to just try to get a pick play your numbers advantage and just try to catch out the wreckers players as much as possible because if you go into a gunfight with wreckers and you're just running head on head at both teams i feel like wreckers is going to win those gunfights more often than not right now with these two teams and it's something that's very doable going into the search and destroy jesse when we take a look at the maps and modes for this series we're going into ella silo for map two mm -hmm. slow is definitely something that you can get when you're looking at this map with how big it is with how you know how many corners there are to check with how slow you know sometimes it is to get from side to side and one thing that is a really big takeaway for Utica in that map number one is their submachine gun players were starting to heat up towards the end there. Finn season was making some plays, looking good in those close quarter battles. And a map like Elisilo, you need your submachine guns to be on fire. And if you can get that out of Finn this time for this map number two, maybe win out on that head to head against Ryoga. Won't be easy, but it will be your way into this map. Absolutely, and the spot that it's going to probably happen more often than not is going to be inside of lockers, right? When you're trying to get the when you're trying to get uh, the bomb down over towards that A site on the top side of the map, it's going to be tough though. For let, let's not get it wrong, sorry, on the bottom side of the map, it's going to be really, really tough for you to kind of get the job done inside of that site. But like you said, the submachine guns starting to heat up. If you can win those battles inside of that small room and force the likes of Rutgers to have to take the bomb more often than not out towards field go out towards the towards shack to get that bomb down could make their lives a lot harder because then you could start to set players up out there if your ARs can win some of those gunfights maybe you might have a sniper who can go off for Utica here inside of the search and destroy as well and just completely lock down that field side of the map could possibly see some good things to come here from Utica but like we said it's not going to be an easy time we knew this match was going to be a little bit of a difficult one here for Utica to come in and win map number one just kind of proved that a little bit more now we need to see how they bounce back here in map number two Everything was shaping up into the start of this series, Jesse, to be, you know, Utica, their search and destroys look the best. They're three and four in this game mode, or three and five, I think, after today, the, their original match today. They're, uh, uh, and uh, Rutgers is two and three. So you see there's a little bit of a difference on either side. Maybe not the shiniest record for Rutgers, and this is where you can, you know, bring this back. It's especially going into an LSC low search mm -hmm. to destroy, where Rutgers are 0 and 1, and Utica are 1 and 0. So differences here. Utica, they found success on this map. Let's see if they can do it again against the likes of Rutgers East. Sports as we hop on board with hyper attack in hand won't be able to spot out Ryuga there and an opening blood for Rutgers Esports. Yeah, a lot of map control immediately here going to Rutgers. They bully their way down in towards that A site, get in immediately and just take full control. Bomb is down as well in a not so great spot. Hybrid down to 15 HP, but will win another big gunfight here and really just 14 now sitting in behind bar, just trying to see if they can find anything. They will spot out hybrid, but still no kills going the way of Rutgers. Utica needs to pick this bomb up and start to try to find a way to move this bomb over towards the B zone because honestly, this A site is going to be very tough to get a lay down. Slowly, Ryuga sneaks his way into the back line. He's top office already. He is moving around the map, Jesse. 14 has no idea where to look. He doesn't know where any of these players are. Chatter's going to be in courtyard. Gets the information. The player he carries gets some shots on. 28 HP for 14. And they are hunting him down. Hybrid's going to get the kill. And Rutgers, they strike first in the search. And honestly, God, I mean, I know I said it in the start of that round, but that is just, it was full map control, right? Inside of that round. You just ran in immediately. You stormed bottom kegs, bottom their side of double doors. And really all they really had to control, if you were looking at it, in terms of the bottom side for Utica, was they had control of pool, they had control of bar, but you really just kind of shut them down completely. Not really a big chance there for Utica inside of that round. And they can't play scared. They 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 have to slow the pace down, like we said, but they can't play scared. You have to take your map positioning, and otherwise Rutgers will just run away with it like that. Rutgers not going to slow down the pacing. You got players in A right away. A little bit of an off angle. That trophy system to work with. Ryuka trying to get some eyes on 14, but won't win it out. Two beautiful kills from Utica to open up this round. Four versus two now. As Rutgers, their attempt to A fails completely. Chatter with the bomb in hand. Could still wrap this out to B. Oh. Gonna take the shot at the fin and... Wow. Okay. Wow. Hashtag headshot Ooh. multiplier with attack 56 in hand right there. Kills in three bullets, maybe even two in that spot. Just absolutely rips them off of the keg's head glitch there. 
as now Rutgers, at least you've got bomb in hand. You can start to at least try to make your way forward, but 14 is still sitting inside of A. Not sure if they saw that player cross down bottom. I believe they did, at least with the positioning and the body language that you're kind of seeing out of 14. And 14 stayed alive so long in this spot call that they've gotten a second trophy to play with inside of the site. He's just posted up. He's chilling. Utica, not too bad of a defensive round there. Those opening kills from 14 and um, and Finn really cementing themselves in a comfortable spot. I'm surprised that you don't wrap it to B if you are thing. Rutgers in this round because you had the bomb in your hand if you're Chatter. You didn't have to, you know, go recover it at all. Could have made the wrap to B. You get a big win through the through kegs, and that gives you full alley control. So. If you're Rutgers looking back at it, there's an opportunity there that you missed. Yeah, it's a big difference, right, from the offense that we saw from Utica where Bomb was down in a bad spot. You didn't have an opportunity to wrap, but then you look at Rutgers, and it's like you have all the opportunity in the world to make a wrap there if you want to. You just choose not to wrap that time. You choose to try to bully your way into the A side. It does not work out for you, but this time for Rutgers on their defense, once again, they will bully their site, their way onto the A site. Chatter's going to get really aggressive here outside. Ooh. Shaq needs to be really careful because there is a player looming on the other side. I believe it's Frenzy. This is what it's about on your defensive round if you're Rutgers. This aggressive positioning that you're going to have from your submachine guns. Chatter's going to get spotted out. And now it looks like Pioneers with a good read. I love this with Utica. The change up to instead of worrying about those fights on the inside, they deal with the players who are on the outside. They draw that first blood, and that might just draw the rest of them out right into the irons of Pioneers. Perfect play from Utica in this attacking round, and they piece or they pick apart Rutgers. Yeah, that bomb goes down at A. Now it's all up to J-Ham here in a 1v3. Not an easy situation at all, especially when you've got two players stacked up in a side of the site the way that you do. J-Ham will try to win a couple of the wall bang spots. Maybe there in that spot, really. You're hoping and you're praying here if you're J-Ham to try to close out this round. Chow top again, not going to find anything. 20 seconds left, Colin. Really, I don't yeah. see any way you win this round. I mean, you're just... Like you said, you're hoping to connect with something through these wall bangs, but you're going to have to go in at some point, and he does. He breaks open the door. Utica waiting in lie. Another solid round on search and destroy. I, I cannot believe what I'm seeing, Jesse. I mean, from map one to map two, this Utica team looks completely different. Yeah, I mean, much better, right, in terms of your... Uh, not just allowing Rutgers to run straight at you. And in fact, you're taking advantage of Rutgers playing a little bit too aggressively here. Now, do I think that Rutgers is making big mistakes inside of this game? Yes. Do I think that they have an, a big opportunity to change those mistakes at the moment? Yes, absolutely as well. I mean, if they wrap B in the, in the round before, a chance they win that round. If they don't just push aggressively single file, they have a chance to win the last round as well here. And this time, Ryuka is going to look into A, not find anything. And this should be a, the call to get this bomb down immediately. But look at these two players coming on the flank. Uh, Frenzy and 14 going to be a big problem here for Rutgers. JM should be hearing all of the information, though. 14 finds Ryuga. Bomb gets planted. And this is where things are about to get scrappy. Hyper eyes on JM, forces him off his top office positioning. Hyper's going to drop all the way down. Chatter in the corner. Hyper almost finds that kill. Not going to realize Hyper's up top waiting. Frenzy flies. Two down for Rutgers. And that's going to bring us into a two versus one. They have no idea that JM has slipped his way back into the office. Nade won't land. But he's going to force the player off the bomb. Frenzy hops it. j -Ham with attack. Gets it done. 13 seconds. There's no time to go for both. So j -Ham, he knows. He just has to wait. And he has to go back in. Check it at 7.5. Big round there. And a beauty job there. Like, you, you called it out perfectly at the end. The timing was just absolutely perfect for j -Ham. And this is Search and Destroy 101. You get the player off the bomb with 13 seconds left. You know, hey, guess what? Let me just back up. I'll wait a few seconds here. Check it again. If he's on it, I kill him. If he's not on it, you know what? We win the round either way. JM finds the player on the bomb. Round closed out. Bada bing, bada boom. Easy as that. And Rutgers again here. They will tie the map up at 2-2. Two to two. But you know, we, we got a competitive one on our hands here, Colin. Both teams are, are, are looking solid here in Search and Destroy so far. Well, here we see Rutgers Esports. Back onto the defense. Frenzy's going to get aggressive. Hyper doesn't know this. Big win through the middle of the map. Going to give some advantage to the lives of Rutgers, but they don't know is right. We're still in behind. Chatter is actually going to be the one all the way top office. And as he gets cut down, that's going to bring that advantage right back into the Pioneers' favor. Ryuga forced to make a play. Not sure if he got spotted by 
player all the way out towards the shack, but eventually Rio gets going to spot it. Nice shots from Frenzy again. It's Jayhem once again against the, the odds. It does not have dead silence either to make a play with here. We'll run all the way across the fence in middle of the map, right outside of field. Just needs to see if they can find anything here. Oh, unfortunately, won't win out on that gunfight across top mid. And this is now where you get into a really tough spot again for Jayhem. Stays alive, but unfortunately in a 1v3 nothing you can do in that situation and again Colin that's just a good job by you to complain the numbers game it's exactly what they need to do if they want to win this map and Utica pioneers they are definitely a lot better on their, their, their search of destroys here. The way that they're playing together the confidence that we're seeing out of Frenzy 14 I mean not only is he Amazing at playing hockey, but apparently this guy is crazy at search and destroy seven and two Always finding those lanes for Utica to work through the map for and bomb planting too He's doing a really good job right now really really everything right oh, now on the back and Rutgers are gonna get aggressive Very very aggressive here through the outer lane and they actually find two players Hybrid immediately gonna wrap to try to put this bomb down inside of B. They don't spot the player in behind the, the door though And It's 14 again. Oh 14 makes the play. Could be traded out. One versus three. This time it's Frenzy. Know exactly where he is. Ryuga sitting on top of the tent. I don't know why he jumped all the way down, but it's going to give Frenzy that chance still. Bomb's going to get planted at B. And look at the arrows of Rucker is playing for the trade. All three players shoulder to shoulder. And Frenzy's going to just try to make this play now in through middle of the map. Might be able to find Ryuga here. Goes for the wall bang. Unfortunately, Ryuga bounces away and comes back. And that's just going to completely throw you as a player. Because you're like, I was wall banging that for so long. Don't hit anything. And then all of a sudden, on my very last shot, I hit one. And it almost causes a little bit of a second guess here. And with shooting in that spot, Jayham is going to be able to trade that out seven out of seven times. And that's another round. There we go towards Rutgers and Colin. This game is uh, it's very close. 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, 3-3. Three, three, and a little bit of a wake-up call to the aggression that Rutgers can provide on their offense. Just rushing through Alley. Finn tried to meet them there, but as soon as he saw him, he backed up. He called for help. Hyper opens up the door, and he got obliterated towards the site. 14 was only good for one, and you maybe thought that was your chance back into this one. But these opening picks for Utica, you miss it out. Or you miss out on that last round, and you see that those first bloods going your way are really a key to success throughout the rest of this game. And I like that Rutgers are starting to slow down a little bit. They have that aggressive pacing, but they know when to stop. And Hybrid almost spotting up 14. Gonna hop in there. Can't get the shots over the arcade. And one for one trade leaves us even at three. Yeah, unfortunately for 14, he needs to get some help here from some teammates. More kills than all of his teammates combined here inside of the game so far. Actually, they're gonna be tied up. I, that, that's quick maths right there. But for 14, you know, they can still get the job done here. And we'll see what Utica can do with the bomb. I mean, there is an opportunity to open this up, push the bomb in towards the A site, but they don't really have any information on it. And 14's actually going to pop dead silence and try to make their way through the flank. We'll find one. This could be a wrap over towards B. Yeah, three versus one. Ryuga this time. He's going to the player and tools. Meets him out to the door and dips in with his life. 35 HP just trying to finesse at this point, Jesse. 17 seconds. Say it ain't so. Say it ain't possible. He still has Deddy. Bomb goes down, though. A lot of noise through that mid door through kegs. A player, top patio player on the inside. He won't even get a chance at the bomb. That's some nice help from the player on patio to watch over 14. Yeah, and that whole round is pretty much one over, right? When 14 is able to get that big kill with the dead silence. And hey, Colin, I mean, people say it all the time, right? But in, in a game like this where dead silence isn't a perk and it's a field upgrade, a lot of times your search and destroy rounds can come down to whoever makes the bigger, uh, the bigger play with the dead silence. And it just turns out. In that round, it is 14 who makes the bigger play with the Dead Silence. Able to find the kill, able to win the round out, and I mean, really, just putting Utica on their back right now inside of this uh, inside of the search and destroy at the moment. 10 and 3, a really good start, and Chatter's actually going to pull out the boomstick here, hoping to maybe find something, a pick for the team. Maybe they can play the numbers game a little bit here, but so far, nothing here from the side of Utica in terms of peeking anything out. Yeah, I think even though 14 has found 10 kills in this game, the kills that his teammates have garnered have been some big openings to the sites. Bomb's going to get planted at A. Nobody here to stop it. Ryuga commanding through kegs. Chatter gets the hit marker in field. 
Oh boy, Frenzy's got to be careful. Some returning fire is going to bring him down to 54. Respect is shown from Chatter. And Hyper is going to get two on the outside. So that's going to leave them susceptible to the break. Finn trying to find an angle on the player on the inside. Ryuka sitting behind this A-bomb. Finn's going to hop in. Ryuka unchecked. Gets the trade. One versus two. 21 seconds. The pacing's going to pop up. And Ryuka's trying to finesse as long as he can on the inside. Time in his favor. He has to take the challenge. But Frenzy gets in. They pinch him out. And Utica, you couldn't have played that better. And a great double chow there from Frenzy and Hyper at the end. Con, I will say one thing, though, from Chatter in that round. Why on earth are you running a knife with your sniper? I, that is my only question in that spot, because in this game, I mean, yeah, the knife, you get a little bit faster mobility with it. Maybe you can get to your spot a little bit faster, but... Uh... I mean, if you have a if you have the pistol there, you can fly out and get that kill very easily after you play, after you tag that player up to one shot the knife. You're not really going to be able to find anything with in that spot, and you end up losing out the round as opposed to it could have been a two two versus a three v one at the end of that round there. So I mean, just things to think about there. Things to think about with Jesse Quenville. That's like that should be a. Uh content piece for you, Jesse, but I, I totally agree with you, you know? Could have been the different. Frenzy's gonna get that opening blood again! Finn doubles down on the outside, Ryuka gets caught in the aggression, and nothing is working for Rutgers right now when it comes to going to these head-on-head -head gunfights. You're gonna need something better, big at a hybrid, and there it is. Bomb down, 14. Slain. And hybrid's looking for more, playing for the ace, that's three in the round. One versus two in an instant. Rutgers, they don't want to give this up just yet. And Hyper, now he's got the pistol in his back pocket, Jesse. No knife to make this happen. If he can get an angle with this boomstick, maybe you bring this into a 1v1. But just look at the positioning of Jayham. He is playing this so safe to the outside of the map. He is completely rotating in tandem with Hyper. Yeah, from a 2v4 to a 1v2 very quickly here. And like you said, Hyper with the sniper pistol combo in hand, it will not be enough. Gets knocked down to 5 HP, and you have the confidence to snap onto that right afterwards. Rucker's ice up there. Really, really big round out of Rucker's. And, I mean, the fact you find three in that round, too, for Ryuga, really, really massive there for Rucker's. This is a good bounce back, right? And something that they, or sorry, it was Hybrid who found the three in the round there. They absolutely needed that. If they if they want to come back here inside of this game, two v four to a one v two, really really quickly, and now Rutgers back on offense. I'm interested to see where they decide to go with this bomb because the A pushes recently have not been working for them. Really, their best offense is when they stormed all the way in through that bottom A site or through the bottom B site. But it looks like this time we're gonna get really aggressive in through kegs. You gotta be careful, hybrid Ryuga working together. 14 looking the wrong way, and they get in. No trouble at all. The Nace back off Hyper has to stay alive and spammed out. Jayhem puts Frenzy in a 1v4 with round 11. Everybody's lighting up. Frenzy's all alone. He hears them trampling around him. But what do you do in the situation? He just has to play one step at a time. He's going to get the information up top off the sun. Opens up the doors through kegs. Chatter inside the site. Hyper or Jayhem up top. And now he's got the 9k Jesse. That's on's gonna be popped. He's gonna try to fake this out. Jayhem's not gonna budge at all. He watches it. He waits. And he gets the kill at the end of the round. Rutgers, they fight fire with fire, and it finally breaks through. And they just barely, Colin, just barely make their way back to another round 11 here. Could we be witnessing another search and destroy breakdown at the moment? We saw one in our last series. That 4v2, man, that could come back to bite Utica really really badly in the butt here and now round 11 comes up you do get Rutgers back on offense I honestly think if I'm Rutgers I'm running at these guys I'm playing as aggressive as possible it seems to be the only really thing that's working for them the slow pace does not seem to work the same way for Rutgers but this time though they'll throw a couple stuns and nades down the hall but first blood goes to 14 once again it's a big one 14 stays alive too Still behind the table, the nade should lead him out, forces him into hybrid, but 14 goes big. 12 kills for the hockey player himself. 
Looking to make some moves for the team. It's all up to Ryuka. World on his shoulder. And he's cut down. Utica Pioneers take a map off Rutgers Esports and tie us up in the series. Tie us up at one to one indeed. And uh, yeah, it's a good map from, from the Pioneers, right? I mean, it's exactly what they needed to do. They slowed the pace down when they needed to. They And more often than not, outside of that, what, 2v4 that they allowed Rutgers to come back from, when they got the man advantage in the round, they were closing those rounds out. But we got to give it up to 14 in that game, Colin. Oh, yeah. I mean, a massive map there for 14. Find 12 kills in the game, but also that final round as well. Not only do you find one inside the site, but you get tagged up, you get naded, you get pushed out of your comfortability spot. And you find a second as well just to give your team the man advantage. And as soon as you find two in a round of search and destroy, it makes that round so much easier as long as your other teammates aren't getting blood of themselves. And Utica, they close it out on the back of a massive performance from player 14. Couldn't ask for anything better, Jesse. You couldn't ask for anything better at all. We look back at the highlights from that game. It wasn't easy at all for both sides and a little bit messy at times from Rutgers, I'd say, with the aggression that they constantly showed on defense. It wasn't working. And, and I would have liked to see them change it up a little bit earlier. Towards the end, they started to, you know, I guess, get a handle on the way Utica Pioneers were playing their offenses. And as soon as they did, I was a little bit worried for Utica. But that last round, the fact that you, uh, 14, like you said, was able to find two big kills inside the A site, barely sneaking away with the one on a hybrid, clutch, clutch plays. Even this kill right here, too. Like, a hybrid is just pushing things in that spot that you just definitely should not be pushing with a submachine gun player on the other side of the wall. There's just a lot. There's, there's a lot in that game that I look at Rutgers, and I'm like, there's so many opportunities that you probably have to win this map out. And just not taking full advantage of you can see the search and destroy kind of i guess um lack of experience in the mode here for Rutgers, maybe lack, lack of reps for the team overall in general and yeah utica just took advantage they definitely look like the better snd team out of these two teams so if utica can find a way to win one of these next two respawns call and i mean who knows that that fifth and final map going on fortress search and destroy fortress can be a really interesting map in terms of just being able to find positioning open things up for your team and also, if 14 can play the way he played in this last map, I'd, I'd definitely be looking for Utica to possibly steal this series away from Rutgers. Yeah, I mean, that brings you to 6 and 18 map count across your season. If you're Utica Pioneers, that, that's a map that you definitely are going to hold close to the heart if, if you are the side of Utica. It's always hard getting the first win in the, in the match, especially when you lose that hard point. Bouncing back is not easy, but they come together and, and they pull a quick one across the Rutgers Esports. So I totally agree with you. I mean, I, I think not only 14, but Frenzy finding so many first bloods was key to that. I think a lot of the highlight, rightfully so, should be on 14 and the plays he was able to make with the submachine gun. We are highlighting the subs going into this map. But when you look at the players around him, there were some big plays going on on Utica from the whole squad. So if you could take that and mimic that into the response now, going into a control where you have a 0 and 7 record just say it 0 and 7 record in this one and hopefully if you're utica you can continue to find some success here absolutely and i think the uh the, the interesting thing that you brought up there colin is that they do finally win out on their sixth map of the season well four of those six maps have been search and destroy victories right only two respawn wins on the season both yeah. coming in hard point i find a hard time to believe that they'll come away with a with an lsc low control win here but if they can come away with that LSC low control or come away with that hard point up right afterwards and get to that search and destroy, it's clearly been their most successful mode. You've clearly found success against Rutgers in it so far. Definitely this series is still on the table here for the taking. 100% Jesse. I mean, when we take a look at these maps and modes for this series, it's going to be crazy to break that down, but we got to get set up for this map three. We're going back to LSC low control. A swing map mode combo in this best of five, folks. We got to get it ready. We're going to head to a break when we come back. The continuation of our match three here on College Cod. See you there. Welcome back, everybody, to College Cod. We're in our third match, Jesse, and in a surprising twist of events, Utica Pioneers take a map off Rutgers Esports to even up the series one apiece moving into this control. When we take a look at the maps and modes for this series, we got LSC Low coming back. But it's going to be controlled this time. And when you and I both know that it's Utica Pioneers, they struggle in the respawns. They struggle in the respawns, particularly 
in control though yet to win a control on the season 0 and 7 in the mode at the moment here honestly i don't even know if they're looking to win this map colin or just looking to kind of build some confidence inside of control at the same time right like this uh, you at least have taken that lse look search and destroy right now so this isn't a must win map at this point uh you do still have that hotel hard point coming up and then the fortress search and destroy if you can get there which honestly after watching that map number two a map that it looks like they could very possibly be able to take off of Rutgers here so you got to win one of these next two to give yourself a shot at that map number five and if I'm if I'm Utica, I'm coming into this map number three, keep my head high, trying to do my best to be able to come away with a map victory here. If you don't, you just kind of take that one on the chin and you got to go full out inside of that next hotel hard point. And, and I need to start seeing a little bit of that confidence I saw out of Utica on that search and destroy because uh, you and I, we were both talking about, you know, maybe you slow things down, you get a little bit passive and you wait for the aggression of uh, Rutgers to present itself. And a lot of the times they were playing off of that and it was succeeding but at the same time frenzy by all means this guy was not waiting he was getting aggressive he was getting into the action he was looking good while he was doing it so if he can continue with that success going into this control i mean this could be a completely different story than what we got in that fortress hard point where rockers they smoked utica in that map number yeah. one i don't expect this control to go anywhere close to the same yeah, I don't expect it to be as dominant as what we saw in that map number one, that 100-point club that we saw from Rutgers, because they really put Utica just in, th in through a blunder, right? Like, Utica did not look good at the all way on that Fortress map goes. one. It does go like that sometimes, right? Especially, we saw submachine gun players on the side of Utica look a lot better on map number two than we saw them look at map number one. I, I mean, 14 probably almost had as many kills as he had in map number two than he had in map number one, in all honesty, and that's just because there were no open lanes. The subs couldn't get pushed up anywhere. They were getting chopped down at every angle because the AR presence on the side of Rutgers was just that much more dominant inside of that map number one so if Utica can kind of come out you open up a few more lanes here you let your submachine guns run wild again inside Ellis Hilo. we saw it inside of map two you never know heading in towards this I think the hard point for them though will be getting this truck hard point you can see it on the right hand side now on the left here very very difficult point to get on the outside especially when your ARs aren't playing at the highest highest level right now well, from the soothing words of I hold shift, Jesse, let's get it on. I'm not as soothing as he is, but fact still stays the same. Map number three, Elisilo starting on the offense. We're getting Rutgers trying to look for a win on Elisilo to start this off. But a wonderful set of kills from Utica just continuing with the success. You got 14 on two in a row, Frenzy on two in a row, and 14 is just going to tuck himself away. Inside of the inside of this billiards room, Finn's gonna take a look out, but everything's gonna be riding on this flank from 14, and he may have just spoiled it. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, you get a couple shots in there, and that player's already pushed all the way through tools up into the top, and you've already almost got a full ticket progression in towards B. Not sure how 14 ends up going down there, but the get wall banged, they end up falling. One ticket progression almost through here. That kill should cement at least one here. They just gotta get on the point. Right now, if your Rutgers hop on, at least get one tick through here. They will secure that first, but you've already taken so much time, Colin, to get that one tick of progression. You've actually given enough time here for the rest of the Utica players to get off spawn and come back to chow. I was going to say, you, you get the kills, but you get only a tick of progression towards B. So, eyes back at A. All four players are looking to stack that zone if you are Rutgers. Here comes 41 or 14 on the flank yet again. Gonna be through after a little bit of heat check off Ryuga. Shots in the inside going the way of J Ham. Frenzy gonna go down as well. They know that 14's above them. They just. 14 doesn't get there in time. And A zone gets cleaned up. A minute 31. We head over to B right away. And Chatter already find the kills necessary. 14 needs to get into the action soon. Or this one's gonna be already done. Second take worked on. 14's finally gonna get a kill through. Tools finds a second. Six and one from 14. But is it enough? Big kills there though. Big, big kills. Yes, it takes a while to get that flank to work their way through, but with that kill, you at least shut down that push over towards B. The rest of the players here, though, on Rutgers need to find a way to get past. And somebody needs to turn around and clear 14 out. If I was in ranked right now, I'd be yelling at my teammates because 14 just keeps shooting everybody in the back right now from the side of Rutgers and absolutely tearing it up. And look, gets one instantly back into field, instantly running back to get behind these players once again. He's watching Prey's gameplay back in that hotel control. And he's like, you know what? I can do this. I can do it too. 
And here we go, 14 just continuing to run. I feel like he hasn't let go of his left analog stick. He's just constantly in the mix. Gonna hear the player on the right. Cruise missile for Utica. Something they couldn't attain back inside the hard point, but here in the control might just be the difference maker for round number one. 30 seconds left. A one life advantage for Rutgers make it two. And here they come. They collapse towards B. Frenzy for the trade. Now everybody on Utica just flying forward. There is still two ticks of progress over towards B. 17 seconds is more than enough time for them to make a push and get onto the point, but they still have not cleared 14 out of the spawn. On a seven spree now, like you said, they've got that cruise missile available, but unfortunately, 14 is waiting for players to come off spawn, but they're spawning on the other side. Needs to get out. They can't drop them. The rest of the players fall, and it was looking so good. 14 was in such a good position, just unfortunately read the wrong spawn. And you can be pushed up as far as you want in that spot, but you need to help your players on the point. And they were just coming, getting put in the blender as they were trying to come off spawn there. Yeah, at one point, Finn, 0-7, just not what you want. Starting off in LSE low control. Slow again to the respawn to the supporting cast of Utica University. The Pioneers definitely let that one slip through their fingertips. 14 was in such a good position, but on the inside of that zone, I mean... The two players from Rutgers just constantly finding success, constantly finding the kills to shut down Ruck, or Utica. And now we turn over to the offensive side to see if Utica can repeat what Rutgers just did to them. They're going to go two for one to open this one up. Maybe dip their toes into B for a moment. Ryuka looking to watch over from top office, see if he can pull a couple of these kills in Jham. And open up with a kill through tools onto Hyper. Ryuka not able to land the shots on the Frenzy. Doesn't connect and Jayhem goes down. So opportunity right now for Utica to start getting some segments here at B. Yeah, it looks like that's exactly what Utica's trying to do. They're just trying to force their way into the B zone right now. But right now though, I mean, all the pressure from the likes of Rutgers is over at B. I mean, they just keep shutting them down every time they step onto the point. At what point, if you're Utica, do you think, hey, they've got a lot of pressure over at B. Maybe let's start to work our way over towards A. Not going to be just yet. Unfortunately for 14, he goes to go on another flank. Unfortunately, will get spotted out. And this first tick on B, it still has yet to be cemented. Chatter on two in a row. 10 and 6. Not too bad of a start. For this LSEO control, you're down to 30 seconds, and lives are even for Utica. You just you don't have the time to make this play. You need to dedicate yourself to a zone, and they do. They hop on A. They stop the clock, but Jaham's going to look in, finds Finn. Time ticking down. 18 seconds. Somebody else has to get on, and they do. 14 going to be to boxes. Hyper, arches. Everybody surrounding this A zone. Can they get the kills? They do. Frenzy finds it with one. 14, a second one. Ryuka's going to hop in for a moment. Takes out the one. Jaham's got to make the play. He does, but back and forth trades, and it's still going to be Utica holding on as best as they can, Jesse. And Hyper looks for the overextension through field, seeing if they can find anything in terms of being able to find an opening over towards this B zone, and they actually do now. The trades go their way. Frenzy hops onto B as well. Finn will be the only player on the A zone in general, but still a few players in and around that they can still try to make a play. 14, unfortunately, will fall as well, and it actually looks like their full focus might be going over towards B now as everybody's going to spawn up towards field. That was a good play from Utica to not send everybody to B right at once. They tried to lurk to A. They tried to pull a quick one from under Rutgers. They're just not able to make it happen. The lurkers from Rutgers, they get the kills necessary. They deal the finishing blow. Are you sure you thought? Frenzy's going to at least breathe a little bit of hope to the lungs of the Pioneers in this A zone. This A zone's about to get captured. 14 gets the final kill, and we're not done yet, Jesse. Not done yet. Still three ticks, though. Needed over at B. 50 seconds to work with here if you're Utica. The problem, though, only nine lives remaining. It is not a whole lot of wiggle room for them to make a play over towards this B zone, especially when you're losing out on all of the gunfights right now. Pure domination in terms of field control right now going to the likes of Rutgers. Hyper well, looking like he wants to do a little bit too much now in the side of Rutgers. Kill's not going the way of Utica at all. No more respawns. Hyper gets read by Jayhem, and there's no more pressure to the zones now. That's good communication from Rutgers to get the job done inside of round number two as they look to go up 2-0 inside of this map. See if they can take this swing map mode with ease. And it's all up to these last remaining players. Two versus ten. Utica 
You know, I've seen crazier things happen, Jesse, but I don't know if this is on the cards right now with only 1.4 seconds left. Hey, 14 is going to give it his all, though. Unfortunately, not able to walk away with that one there. And actually, they never ended up getting a ticket progression over towards that B zone. So it ends up being a 6 to 3 lead for Rutgers after two rounds and a 2 0 lead in terms of the round count here, looking to close it out in three to give themselves a little bit of a domination and a little bit of a lead heading in towards a hotel hard point. But Utica, they're not out of this one yet. They actually had a really good defense their first time through as well. 14 did a really good job of getting in the back line, being really, really annoying to a lot of the Rutgers players. If they can find a way to to, to replicate that success here inside of the round without giving up so many ticks early on in the round, they definitely could find success on defense. The two-for-one trade for Rutgers to open up this B zone. Player number five, 14, gets cut down through the alley, and this is the time to just jump onto the zone and start soaking up these segments at B. If you're Rutgers Esports, Shadow's going to get a little bit too aggressive into the back line. Frenzy off spawn, going to cut him down. Finn, now his chance to get into the mix. On screen, Jayhem almost finds his third in a row, but Finn, big shutdowns to the middle of the map. 9 and 20, but may have just salvaged this round. Maybe, just maybe, but you do have Utica. A few players pushed up forward here. This is going to force a spawn out again up towards that field side of the map. So there's still an opportunity now for Rutgers to hop onto B. The map is pretty much flipped between the two teams here. At some point, you do have to realize that if you're Rutgers and try to shut down this flank of 14, who once again is just sitting in your spawn throughout the entire round here. And I, I mean, they've got two players just sitting inside of the middle building. I'm very interested to see what Rutgers decides to do here. And it looks like they may choose to go over towards the A zone now. 14 is still alive on this flank. Nobody's hunting him down. Everybody's just looking for the zones. Ryuka again doesn't check his corners. And nobody wants to trade him out. So everybody from Rutgers just racing to get to this A zone. 14 is going to have a chance to interrupt. Nobody to help him. Breaks open the door and now they know. Chatter peeking his way through the door. But the second tick at A. Going to be cemented in. Frenzy finally going to find a kill to the zone. A gets cleaned up. And by the time that Utica get to the zone, Jesse, it's already gone. Oh, and they need to be really careful here because Rutgers is moving very quickly across the map. Two for two trades, so nothing crazy yet. The player that everybody on Utica, or on Rutgers, needs to be aware of is player number five or number 14, whatever you want to call them, sitting inside of their building once again and just looking to try to be annoying on the flank as players start to cross. And finally, somebody sniffs out 14. It's hybrid, wow. and now you've got an opening to cross field. Took him so long, but 16 to 15 in lives. Hyper's going to get a team kill, although able to keep things afloat for the side of Pioneers. Hyper with a big two. Hyper with 31 HP does not have any opportunity to get onto the zone just yet. Has to bide his time and wait for the respawners. Get into a position, but again, Jesse, I mean, 14, he's right back in yep. position. He's working his way as a play yet again, and Rutgers, if history repeats itself, yeah, 14 still continuing to be that nuisance. 20 and 10, trying his best to deny anything from Rutgers in this round. Nobody's going to be able to get close to the zone for a while. Only 20 seconds left. Still have a shot at this. They just need to push all through the front to try to break this. But as soon as you touch the point here, it's going to be very tough to hold on to anything with the positioning. But they do get two. Oh, three. Now there's an opportunity. Somebody's got to get on. They stop the clock here. Oh, this could get really, really bad. They're all spawning out towards the top left. Whoa, somebody gets blessed with the spawn. It's going to be Frenzy. Jayhem hops on, but he doesn't know. He doesn't know. Utica Pioneers, they still have a chance at this. Ryuga trying to spoil the fun. He cuts the rotations. Two versus one on the inside. Jayhem just pre firing every angle, but it's not going to find the kill. Finn finds the two kills necessary on the inside to get this one done. And a cruise missile from 14 for the cherry on top. Utica Pioneers, they say we are not done with control just yet. Oh, yeah, they were really scared about losing that round, and that's why you see 14 invest the cruise missile at the very end of it there. And they just barely, again, scrape away a round victory. I mean, it would have been another barely offensive victory there for Rutgers if they were able to close that one out. But let's not forget, 
on the Utica offense. Rutgers had a chance to close it out before Utica even got a tick of progression last time through. Utica had a very late push over towards A. They need to have a better early offense here to give themselves an opportunity to be able to get a second uh, zone of progression. And, and again, Jesse, as the series or as the map goes on, Finn just getting better and better. 14 and 25 compared to the 0 and 7 start. We had it hasn't been the cleanest game, but you know what? At the end of the day, a dub is a dub. So if you can heat up towards the end, it's not about how you start, Jesse. It's always about how you finish inside of Call of Duty. So this is going to be Utica's chance to take this offensive round. You are pushing through the field, but you don't know J Ham's going to be on the flank. He slips into green. I'm not sure if they saw this. No arrows going to be turning around, so Jaham could completely be the 14 of the operation and play for these flanks. Chatter there as well. He's going to get eyes on the players on the inside. Clear off B for now. And hybrid right there with him. It's three down for Utica. Oh, they're just coming from every angle right now. Again, 14, you know, going to be sitting in a corner, just being really, really annoying to the players on Rutgers. And just trying to stay alive inside of tools here. I mean, if I'm any of the records players at this point as well, I honestly don't even want to push this. Who he's in a different spot every single time you try to win a gunfight against the man. So it could definitely get really, really frustrating to deal with here. But you look at the ticks of progression coming through. You've got one progress tick over towards B, one progression of tick over towards A. And you're trying to clear this player off of the A zone right now, but you do have to not only worry about them, but the player number eight who's in your spawn and player number um, player number seven that was up in top of the tower. Yeah, Utica are getting a lot of kills towards A. Last time it was only 1.2 seconds where they had to get the zone. This time they're going to get done with an extra 33. So A zone gets cleaned up. Life lead for Rutgers, but marginal. One tick at B already as well. So, I mean, this is... Very doable, Jesse. It is very doable. The only thing that is unfortunate for Rutgers or for Utica right now is that they, are, even if they win this round, they will not get the final defense. Rutgers has enough ticks for themselves to secure themselves that final defense no matter what here. But, I mean, you got to get there first, and Utica already yeah. onto the B zone. They've got half of that second tick halfway through. Finn's got top control as well. And this is so far looking good. You've got the players now on Rutgers starting to spawn out. Oh, 14 Fight Shatter, the trade, Ryuga up top, has to go big, everybody's spawning away for Rutgers, and this round being thrown away before our eyes, Jesse, Ryuga goes down, and now it's Hybrid's turn to take some sights onto the zone, Hyper's gonna trade it out, steal a chance for Utica, cruise missile again for 14, dropping down onto the respawners, Ryuga cleaned up, they're stacking the site, they're stacking the zone, and Utica... No way to get this done! One more tick, Jesse Hybrid has to get the kills! He has to look in! And it's just not gonna happen! And Utica walk away with the round victory on the back of another massive round from 14. That cruise missile at the end is everything. Not only do you get one of the players coming off respawns, take away one of their reinforcements, but you get all the information in the world on where the rest of the players are all coming from. You get, you drop that glide, you kill everybody else in and around it. It still got close towards the end there. There was a player still on the point to get that last second contention, but unfortunately only able to take one of the two. And now, Colin, we go to a round number five here between Rutgers and between Utica. It took us all 11 rounds inside of the Search and Destroy. Now the control also going the full distance here. But like I said before, Utica, they didn't do enough in round one to give themselves an opportunity to get that final defense. So they will have to do that hard job of winning an offense here on LSEL control all over again oh, now. Jesse. Utica starting to kick it into gear. Jayham also not going to back down from the fight. Tack in hand almost gets three. On the inside of this A site for SND. Hybrid is just forcing these gunfights from Finn. Pack and forth trades to open this one up, but it's going to be Rutgers to come out on top with a life advantage by one. You see the respawners from Utica. They're all over the place. You got a couple over to A, a couple over to B, and with Rutgers just solidifying themselves in these Tough angles. Cleanups are going to be shown, and Hybrid's able to sniff out Frenzy. Not enough done by Utica to really solidify themselves onto one of these zones just yet. And the thing that you have to do here, honestly, if you're Rutgers in this situation where you're starting to get these players spawned out, you need to get a player pushed up to Shaq. If you can play a player over at Shaq 
right where you saw a man or hybrid trying to work their way up to. Once you get a player there, it forces the spawn out towards top green. It makes their lives a lot harder on the offense to get anywhere because you're just funneling in through field over and over again. Though they were not able to find it again. 14 finds a couple of kills. Double positive at 32 and 16 right now going massive for the squad. And this game is all tied up 20 to 20. And they are working on this second take of progression, Colin. Yes, they are. 19, 19 in live. Somebody's going to hop on to contend. Hyper gets some eyes on. And then a to finish off Jham. 14 able to just stay on these boxes and work on this third tick of progression. I don't think anybody's going to be able to get here in time. Even if Hyper darts over towards the zone, it is done, Jesse. And Utica, one segment or three segments at P away from getting their first control win in the CCL. Yeah, you can see they've been putting in the work to get better at this map, better at this mode combination, and so far, working really well here. 16-16 lives. Ryuka will find one of the players starting to try to sneak their way over towards this B zone. The thing is, is they just can't let anybody slip through, and they need to push up and get map control. It's going to be the case, Finn. What just happened? Ryuka somehow able to slip in behind, you know, flank Finn in tools. Hyper's turn to get into the mix. He's going to get the first one, activate a little bit, and as soon as he does that, you see those Rutgers arrows all turn around to collapse onto the solo player. Hybrid gets cleaned up, but it's Jayhem's turn to come alive. You see that he is just doing exactly what 14 was doing the last one. We know, Jesse, it's not done until it's all over in the time bank pioneers they came alive into the last couple of seconds of that last round and somehow we're able to make magic happen so this is their moment you get three down chatter has to do everything in this round to keep utica away 17 hp and 14 rushes him might have just taken just enough time out of that, though, to give the rest of his players a chance to come off respawn and get onto the point. Utica still not on B. They finally hop on it with three seconds left. They were waiting. 2.6 seconds. For all the seconds. They'll find. This is all going to be down to a frenzy kick. Get on in time. And Rutgers deny Utica of a round win. Of a map win. And Utica Pioneers, they still stay winless in the control game mode. I, I, they gave down it to all. the wire, Jesse. Neck and neck. I mean, Utica, they poured their hearts into that map. And it was broken. They, they gave it their all, Colin. They really gave it their all to come away with that one there. You could see the fight. The resiliency from the Utica Pioneers fighting toward that map victory, unfortunately, just not enough to come away with it there. And that's why getting those early ticks of progression in rounds one and rounds two of your offenses are so important. So you can give yourself that final defense in the final round there. And Rutgers, they knew exactly what they did wrong in the round before. They expanded too many lives over towards B that the A zone was a or over towards A, I should say, that the B zone was a little bit easier for the likes of Utica to kind of string the two together. This time they just completely chalk A once the two ticks of progression are on it and they completely get a full setup over towards B and they make it so hard to push in. Got to give a big shout out to 14 in that map. Honestly, in my opinion, the only reason Utica was really in that map, just playing massively. So, so annoying. Every single round, just sitting in different spots, just dropping the players as they got into powerful positions or dropping the players off spawn. You just constantly had to check every corner because 14, you could never know. That player could have been absolutely anywhere. But unfortunately, again, just not enough. And now they're going to have to worry about going to a hard point and taking away a hard point victory over the likes of Rutgers. Takeaways, Jesse. Uh, respawn starting to slowly but surely look more comfortable for Pioneers. You know, it's a little bit of a reach, I'd say, but at the same time, I mean, they take it all the way to around five here on LSC low control. They just, it, it shows that it's doable. It is doable to take a respawn off of this Rutgers team, and we might be looking at a map five. If it does go to a map five, you think that Pioneers definitely should feel good about this series against Rutgers Esports and I, I mean looking at 
everything from that game. You talk about 14, I gotta talk about Frenzy too, because 14 may have been doing the heavy lifting when it comes to the rotations and flanking all the time, but on the inside of these hills, Frenzy was making sure that he was finding so many clutch wins. Two pieces, three pieces, Frenzy was just staying on pace with the slaying that 14 was bringing. Towards the end of the game, Utica... I thought they were going to do it, Jesse. I thought so too. They, they got there. three down towards B, but it took them too long to get onto that zone. And while well, that happened, I mean, Rutgers had their opportunity to come off spawn and, and get into a position where they can just find one on one duels. And nothing was ever solidified for Pioneers because of mainly because of chatter towards field. Yeah, just doing a really good job of locking field down, not making the players have to funnel through alley and funnel through the building as well inside of LSU. It's very, very tough, but unfortunately, somebody has to lose the map in Utica. Unfortunately, don't walk away with it here. But like you said, call it, it gives us a little bit to hope for, right? Going in towards this map number four. I can definitely see an opportunity here where Utica can come away with the map victory. It's really going to come down to just kind of playing all together, though. They do a good job inside of the search and destroy and, the, and in the slower modes, especially 14. You can see 14 really comes alive inside of the controls, inside of the search and destroys as well. Really came alive to just be that annoying nuisance player. You're constantly having to check your back. You're constantly having to look behind you and just be really yeah. aware of where 14 is on the map at all times and that can stick to you so in those slower modes yes it works really really well but now you got to win a fast mode and it's going to be tough especially when you head over towards a map like hotel because this is another one of those maps where I, it can get really really scrappy on certain hills jesse i'm not sure if the stats were right there but there were three players in that map that almost had four thousand damage players were pouring their blood sweat and tears into that LSC low control. And Rutgers, by all means, you're winning this series 2-1, to one, but it has not looked good. Utica Pioneers going into this hotel hardpoint, I would be feeling on cloud 9 with the way that you were pushing Rutgers against the ropes. You are moments away from stealing a respawn away from them, and this could be your chance. Heading into a hotel hardpoint, in the past, Utica have not had success on this map. 0 and 2 instead of that 2 and 8 record that, that we have for Utica University. And I think if there's one thing you can really put in favor of Utica for this map mode combo today, it's the flanking that you're getting out of 14. If he can continue that in this hard point hotel, there are plenty of routes to hit to make sure that you're always in behind. There is a lot of routes. The big thing for Utica in this, though, if they want to find success in hardpoint, Colin is going to come down to the rotations. They got out-rotated badly in map number one by Rutgers. Rutgers constantly just seemed like they were a step ahead, and that's why you saw a 100-point club come through. You need to be better. The slain also needs to be a little bit higher. You can't rely on just 14 to be dropping the numbers here in this map number five. Well, this is good. good early time in the atrium for Rutgers. Nobody really trying to interrupt this and when they do chat or jam doing a great job at boxing them away hybrid's just soaking up the time in the inside of this point and nobody has really had a chance to go toe to toe with them ryuko finally going to be shut down on that catwalk hybrid peeks up for the trade 50 hp and somehow beats out frenzy lets him know how did you let me do that and look at this jesse you don't always see it but over 40 points off the opening hill a good play, though, there from the likes of Utica. They spot out that rotation through the back very, very quickly. One player on the likes of Wreckers was trying to make a play through Spa. They at least shut that down. But unfortunately, now, you allowed them to push through Shandy. And not only push through Shandy, they get completely in the back line. They'll very likely have a player spawn a bedroom. It's exactly where player aid spawns here. Now everybody needs to funnel through the front. And you can see the rest of the Utica players, they're still trying to, fu to funnel in through the back. And I think 14 is going to actually get spotted out here. No, he's still fighting. A kill on the wow. flank. I can't believe it. Ryuga, five in a row. Cruise missile early. Maybe in the cards, but Frenzy finally going to trade him out. Within that eight-point buffer, Rutgers get the early break towards this P2. They are not dropping lives, and this has been nothing but flawless so far going into the fourth map. You definitely see that, you know, when the Surge of Destroy and Controls have been super close, the hard points have just been a separate entity. 84 to 8 heading into the kitchen hill the early rotations for utica will be here but chatter just looking to find a way in somehow still alive don't tell me no don't let him do it okay okay 
at least a little bit of stabilization, but gives enough time for the rest of the players here on Rutgers to come off spawn, go through the back line. Nades and spawns are going to hit, uh, nades and stuns are going to hit immediately in the back. And this is going to give a good opening here to try to get inside of the point. Finn unfortunately has to reload, and you'll get a one-on-one -on -one here, a little bit of a snake off. Hyper will walk away with it, but only 8 HP in a dream. Oh, and Ryuga just maintains control. 2 HP walks away with a double kill. Another early break from Rutgers. Another chance to push this lead even farther. They're going to amass 100 points early. Three hills already. Chatter. Starting to work towards that P4, though. Three unanswered kills from Utica. Should allow them some early time for this hill yet again. But uh, that's not the issue, Jesse. The issue is holding these hills and looking at it. It's going to be hybrid on the flank this time. 14 sniffs it out. Yeah, 14 just gets a whiff of that and will be able to drop that player as they try to push across. Actually, looking so far, like this could be the best setup that we've seen from Utica here so far. Everybody on the side of Rutgers is going to have to push in through the left side of the map here. And I mean, they're getting shut down completely. You only lose out on one player here. And player number two can come right off spawn and get right back into that position here as everybody tries to flood again from bedroom. Give him time to pick up this best chance we've seen from Utica to start clawing their way back in. Nice shot from Finn. And JM's going to get red as well. Finn now four kills in a row. The streakiest I've seen from him all series long. Can he find number five? Chatter is going to be spotted, but can't win it out. Nice shots there from the ARs of Rutgers to break back in. And Frenzy and Hyper trying to work their way over to the rotation to P5. They will be there first. As they bring this back, Jesse, to about a halfway mark. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you only get the back 15 seconds there if you're Rutgers. So is that really worth even grabbing? Because now you allow the rest of Rutgers to push across and get a full setup. That team nade not going to help the push here from Rutgers either. But you do get one player to spawn out and a little bit of a pinch potential starting to be set up here now for Rutgers. Double kill to open this one up. Chatter splits through the middle, finds the player through Freezer 14. Spawns all the way to the middle of the map for Utica, so they're going to have a chance to get right back into this. Finn through the side door. Hybrid goes down. Jayhem all alone on an island. Ryuga's going to be here to reinforce, but is it too late? Has to walk away with this kill, and he wins, wins it out. But now the rest of Utica off spawn. They're going to be here. Luckily for Yuka, he's got his teammates, and he's still alive on the inside for 15 seconds. It'll be big, but it's not going to happen. Utica, they break for a moment. Rutgers starting to get fought back here in the map. But again, they still have a big lead, Jesse. They do have a big lead, but again, the rotation battle won here by Utica for now. Hybrid's trying to make this work through the front. Chatter actually finds a kill as well in the back, and that's actually going to give the back spawns now to the Lycas of Rutgers. But everybody here on Utica, they can still try to funnel the through from the front side. It really is going to depend on whether or not Hybrid can recognize these spawns coming in through the front. Jam's going to pull. With flank through the staircase. Nice shots there from Hyper to get a long range angle onto that player, but still kills working the way of Rutgers Esports. And big spawn up here from Jayhem will have eyes on the rotation through mid. Ryuka's gonna jump right into bedroom. The first one there. Can't find a second. Finn still walking away some for some clutch kills, just not able to finish the job. And at the end of the, the day, you're looking at the scrap time from Rutgers that they're getting at every single hill, and it's enough to just keep them at arm's reach, Jesse. Yeah, and now a 100-point lead here. Built for Rutgers at the end of the first set of rotations. Very similar to what we saw in our map number one on Fortress. And looking to try to pile it on here. Looking to start to put this one away. Or at least think to put it away as we head back over to Atrium. But a good start to the Atrium Hill here for Utica. As they'll be able to get four kills in a row. Start to spawn Rutgers out. And they need to start to look for where these players are coming off spawn. To make sure they can pick them off. As long, along with holding on to the right side spawns. To try to pin this into P2 as well. Majority players spawn towards the bedroom, but it's that one lurking player, Chatter, spawns in the kitchen, able to pop his head out through the catwalk and interrupts that full setup from Utica, sends them in shambles for the site, and now JM inside the hill with a submachine gun. I'm pretty sure he's been running attack majority of the series. He's just sitting and chilling inside of this P1 hard point, and he is not even losing a gunfight. 19 and 11, JM having quite the game inside of Hotel Hardpoints. 
Rutgers Esports now looking to put this away as we head into our second set of rotations, second hill. It's a foot race in a 2v2 over towards the new hill here. You can see Chatters in the back. He does have some help in the back as well from Hybrid, but unfortunately Chatter goes down. Hybrid not getting the trade here either, and they're still just chilling in the back. They fall as well. Back spawns again. Go to Utica. Do, but remember last time in this hill they got broke very early. Disgusting shots from Finn with the Vasnev, but this is a long road back into the game, Jesse and Utica. They cannot afford to give up any drop off this hill. Finn's going to peek out four in a row for him. Snaps over to Spa, but not going to get the chance to fight Ryuga just yet. It's hyper for the trade to continue to hold this success for Utica. But now you have to look at this. It's a foot race over towards the kitchen. You know that Rutgers, all they need to do is set up for new. All they have to do is rotate, Jesse. Utica, can they get their first? Can Frenzy do what he needs to do to break this setup? Oh, it's going to be tough. They will get one of the back. Player number three as well, 14. Of course, it's 14 on the flank, making a massive play in the back line here. They do set up a pinch potential. 14 kills another player in through mid. They've got a 4v2 on its own. Dude, Frenzy finds Ryuga. Chatter's going to be here to help. Jayhem needs to go big. He's going to get two, and it's Chatter's turn to step up to the plate. Winning out on these gunfights. There's only 15 seconds needed to put this series away. Nate into the back line. Not sure if 14's even going to be able to look in on this. Contestion through the side door. And two players going to stack this. Oh, trying to hold on as best they can. The Pioneers just extending this game towards the end. But they break it yet again. And Rutgers now four points away. The hard points just to cut above Utica today. And they're not letting go of this series. 250-131. And like you called it out, Colin. Just a cut above right now when it comes to the hard points. The rotations, much better from the side of Rutgers. The slain, much better from the slide of Rutgers. And I mean, again, like you said, just they look a step ahead when it comes towards the respawns, when it comes towards hard point in particular. And a really, really good game out of Rutgers to close that one out there. They just controlled the pace. I mean, 180 to 80 after the first set of rotations is always going to be a tough one to come back from. And unfortunately for Utica, they woke up a little bit too late there inside of that map. Once they started to get things rolling, they were kind of in a situation where not only did you have to hold on to all of the scrap time, but also get a full setup over towards new if you want to make a way back into the game. And that is never an easy thing to do, especially on a map like Hotel, where the, where the hills are so far apart from each other. Yeah, uh, Rutgers on a hotel. I mean, what a start, too, from this. 45 points off that first seal. They only allow eight points on the second before they break. I mean, they came out swinging in this map four. They were upset that that sh control went all the way to a round five, Jesse. And then, you know, maybe we had a little bit of doubt, you and I, going into this map four, that maybe Utica had a chance for a respawn win in this map and uh, immediately right out the gates. Rockers denied us of that doubt. I think you know, every single time, I, I Utica, I think won eighty percent of the rotations to these hills, Jesse. But Rockers were just breaking so fast. Yeah, and that's the tough part, right? I mean, they were winning in terms of positioning to the hills, but in terms of getting the back spawns and getting the spawns that you want to hold down hills, Rutgers was winning the rotations, in my opinion, quite a bit more often than not, because they just had the, the back spawns a lot. I mean, you got to think back to, to P3, back to the uh, back to the kitchen hill, right, when they went there the first time through, and everybody on Rutgers is kind of flanking their way in through the back, and then go all the way to P6 when they're playing top garage, and everybody again, just pushing through the back line, they get those back spawns. That's really where Utica kind of fell in that game, but I will say one thing, though, Colin, and I'm looking at Utica when I'm thinking this, is they showed a lot of character here today. I mean, this team is it struggling is. this season, right? Like, like no easy way about it struggling now one and seven on the season it has not been easy for them respawns have been very very tough for them to be able to come out and walk away with and they played their heart out every chance they got and you got you got to give it to them for that there's no quit in this team they played very very hard and honestly just from myself i, I commend that very hard so very much yeah, so. You, you you have to sit here and respect what we got out of utica pioneers tonight they didn't come away with the win but they showed a lot of promise in their heart you know you respect the effort that they gave and even towards this hard point i mean you look at the stats from utica pioneers finn 
Where was this throughout <laughs> the last couple of respawns? 20 and 22, minute 47 in the hill, putting on a show constantly, finding four pieces throughout the map. Wasn't enough to pull Utica Pioneers to a win, but I mean, you look across the board for Utica, not too shabby when it was down to the stats. It's just, I think it's more so the macro, the ma micro, you mix it together and just something is not mixing well for this Utica team. So they're going to lose this series to Rutgers tonight, but like you said, Jesse, I wouldn't hang your heads down low because you played your heart out, you kept your heart on your sleeve, and it was definitely tippable. We look back at the series, Jesse. The Elisilo did. Uh, the control could have been a win for Utica Pioneers. It could have. They had the recipe to success towards the end of it. But the only thing that the Pioneers are going to find today is a search and destroy win on that Elisilo map number two. The rest of it, Rutgers through and through. They look good on those hard points. They do look good on those hard points. It's gonna be it's gonna be a uh, a point for Rutgers to really kind of build on, right? You you get those really good hard point victories. If you can start to kind of figure it out and search and destroy, have closer or cleaner games inside your control, Rutgers, I could see being a team that could maybe rise towards the top of this Northeast Division, or at least towards the middle cut of the Northeast Division. That's right about where they're sitting right now. You want a couple more games out, maybe take a couple off of those other mid-pack teams. You can see yourself right towards the top. Give yourself a good seed going into playoffs, right? That's really what you're playing for right now at 4-3, and because you're probably not going to get one of those top seeds at the moment, or really be able to walk away with a lot of those bragging rights in terms of being like, hey, I, we took down a bunch of the top teams. It's probably not going to happen at this point of the season, but you can build off every win build off every loss just try to get better week by week and then you get that good seed going into playoffs beat up a couple of the teams down low give yourself a shot when you go up against some of those other top teams you can definitely build off some of these wins here for Rutgers I always look forward to LCQ time because you never really know what you're going to sure. get from these teams, Jesse. Just complete different teams from the start of the season to the end of the season. But that's going to be all for our matches today. Match number one, two, and three done and dusted. I do want to give a shout out once again to America's Navy for helping put on this college cod season. For a limited time, future active duty sailors who leave for boot camp before March can earn an enlisted bonus up to $115,000. That is a lot of money for a bonus. So go check out America's Navy, navy.com. Show them some love for helping put on this lovely season of College Cod that we have this year, Jesse. Any finishing thoughts you have today across our three series? Ooh. I know, uh, it, I will say the series layouts, the, uh, the, the outcomes of these matches do not really tell a good story from what we really got on the inside. I think my major outlook today is that Marcel really is the real deal, I think. If, I, if I'm looking at anything from today that, I, that I'm really thinking, especially me being on the top 25 committee and like putting a lot of votes in, I, I've been putting them up there because their record and everything and just the hype around them has kind of been backed up quite a bit, but getting to see them now firsthand on stream today and really getting to see how good this team really is with behind Megatron putting this team together. I think that, uh, that they are absolutely the real deal. They're gonna be really, really tough to combat with this season. And I really enjoyed watching them on stream. Hopefully they can get those matches from spring break all caught up as well. And I, honestly, I could see this team going flawless throughout the regular season. That match against UNA, Ooh. I believe that match is either week five or week six. It's coming up soon. That is going to be a banger of a match. Hopefully we can get that one on stream. I can't wait to see who gets the outcome of that match. But except, folks, it's going to be all for today on College Cod. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, follow us. Make sure you are following all the socials for Call of Duty so you don't miss a beat here for college god because this is a fun time through the league and we get to do it all over again tomorrow don't miss out college god tomorrow on tuesday same time same place we'll see you there